Lecture 3.6, The Chain Rule. Particular chain was on the USS Alabama, which is permanently moored in Mobile, Alabama, and is open to visitors. We now have a pretty good list of shortcuts to find derivatives of simple functions. Of course, many of the functions that we will encounter are not so simple. What is needed is a way to combine derivative rules to evaluate more complicated functions. Consider a simple composite function. y equals 6x minus 10 which could be written as y equals 2 times 3x minus 5. If we let u equal 3x minus 5, then y equals 2u. dy dx equals 6. But dy du equals 2. and du dx equals 3. Now we notice something interesting. 6 equals 2 times 3. dy dx then equals dy du times du dx. Here's another example. y equals 5u minus 2, where u equals 3t. Then y equals 5 times 3t minus 2. If we simplify y equals 5 times 3t minus 2, to y equals 15t minus 2, then we can find dy dt, which is 15. But dy du is 5, and du dt is 3. Once again, 15 equals 5 times 3. And we see that dy dt equals dy du times du dt. And one more example. y equals 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. This one we can factor because it's a perfect square. and we let u equal 3x plus 1. So y equals u squared. Notice this function is different from the previous two, which were linear. dy dx equals 18x plus 6. dy du equals 2u which means dy du equals 2 times 3x plus 1, or dy du equals 6x plus 2. But du dx equals 3. And we notice that 18x plus 6 equals 6x plus 2 times 3, or dy dx equals dy du times du dx. This pattern is called the chain rule. The chain rule, dy dx equals dy du times du dx. 
if f of g is the composite of y equals f of u and u equals g of x, then f of g prime equals f prime at u equals g of x times g prime at x. Here's our first example. Uh, we're going to look at several different treatments of the chain rule to see which works best for most of the problems we'll be looking at. If f of x equals sine x and g of x equals x squared minus 4, find f of g prime at x equals 2. f prime of x equals cosine x. g prime of x equals 2x. And g of 2 equals 4 minus 4, or 0. So we take f prime of 0 times g prime of 2, which is cosine 0 times 2 times 2, or 1 times 4, or 4. We could also do it this way f of g of x equals sine x squared minus 4. y equals sine x squared minus 4. And we substitute, so y equals sine u, u equals x squared minus 4. dy du equals cosine u, du dx equals 2x, and dy dx equals dy du times du dx. So dy dx equals cosine u times 2x, but since u equals x squared minus 4, dy dx equals cosine x squared minus 4 times 2x. Substituting in 2 for x, dy dx equals cosine 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times 2, or cosine 0 times 4, which once again is 4. Here is a faster way to find the derivative. y equals sine x squared minus 4. y prime equals cosine x squared minus 4 times the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 4. So what we did is we took the outside function, which is sine, and we differentiated to get cosine. So we differentiated the outside function, then we multiply times the derivative of the inside function. Then we take the derivative of the inside function at x equals 2, y prime equals 4. Another example, ddx cosine squared 3x. Whenever we see this little bit of mathematical shortcut when a problem is written, for example, cosine squared, we rewrite it as a quantity squared. So we rewrite it as cosine 3x quantity squared. Now the outside function is exponentiation. So we bring the two down and decrease it by 1. So we just get an invisible 1 there. And then multiply times the derivative of the inside. The inside was cosine 3x. So we have the derivative of the outside function. 
times the derivative of the inside function. And it looks like we need to use the chain rule again. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative sine 3x times the derivative of the inside of that function, which is 3x. The chain rule can be used more than once. That's what makes the chain in the chain rule. So we take the derivative again and then combine the negative 2 and the 3 to get our answer. Derivative formulas include the chain rule. For instance, d dx u to the n equals n u to the n minus 1 times du dx. d dx sine u equals cosine u times du dx. d dx cosine u equals negative sine u du dx. d dx tan u equals secant squared u du dx etc, etc, etc. The formulas on the memorization sheet are written with u prime instead of du dx. Don't forget to include the u prime term. The most common mistake on the chapter 3 test is to forget to use the chain rule. And just about every problem on the chapter 3 test will require the chain rule. Every derivative problem could be thought of as a chain rule problem. For example, d dx x squared could be written as 2x times d dx of x. So we have the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. However, in this case, the derivative of x is 1. So we just get 2x. We don't usually show this step because we know the derivative of x is going to be 1. The chain rule enables us to find the slope of parametrically defined curves. dy dt equals dy dx times dx dt. We divide both sides by dx dt. We get dy dt over dx dt equals dy dx. Turning that around, we have the slope of a parametrized curve given by dy dx equals dy dt over dx dt. Example, x equals 3 cosine t y equals 2 sine t. These are the equations for an ellipse. If we had the equation for the derivative, we could find the slope of this ellipse at any point. dx dt is negative 3 sine t dy dt equals 2 cosine t. dy dx then is 2 cosine t over negative 3 sine t or negative 2 thirds cotangent t. Now we can find the slope for any value of t. For example, when t equals pi over 4, the point on the ellipse is right here. The slope then is negative 2 thirds cotangent pi over 4, which is negative 2 thirds. So the slope of the tangent line at that point is negative 2 thirds. Don't forget to use the chain rule.